So my name is uh, Isla Forku. I'm the regional medical officer or uh, basically medical director for Caremore Health Plan in uh, Nevada. Um, it's the first time I've ever had a BYOT, bring your own timer. Um, <laughs> so I'll try to stick to it. Uh, so as a side, uh, prior to Caremore, I was at University of Chicago and being immersed in such an incredible research environment, they always emphasize internal versus external validity. And there's such a temptation to generalize prematurely. And it's not just researchers, it's not just the policy analysts, it's certainly to the business sector, right? You want to see if this product can fly. Um, and we have to fight that temptation. There's unfortunately not enough incentive to actually understand how to better choose our targets and better understand our failures. Um, so there's a few uh, areas I, I would like to share with you. Um, one is, you know, we talk about Medicaid, we talk about Medicare, um, but there's a lot of heterogeneity in there. There's rural versus suburban versus urban. There's Medicare substrata and tailoring our general approaches, but specifically even protocols around it. We don't talk about it enough. Um, and what you might see in one half of a state is very different than what you might see in the other half of the state, let alone from city to city. And I don't think that gets enough due. And from a business perspective and allocating resources and justifying budgets, that's certainly important to ensure uh, consistency and success. Uh, the second thing that co comes up in practice, um, but not as visible from 10,000 feet up, is how to influence the practice of a culture in local environments. So not the clinicians per se, but the environment in which the clinicians practice. That's going to skew what patients see. Um, and you know there was some mention earlier about longitudinal data. You can collect longitudinal data, but it's skewed largely around local environment practices. I can tell you right now, what is practiced in Nevada is very different than was in Chicago or in Boston or in New York, but it's highly influential in terms of care delivery. Um, a third aspect, and we've all talked about, I don't need to harp on it anymore, but it, the behavioral health being interwoven into chronic disease management protocols and training. At Caremore, we pride ourselves in our, um, you know, our SNP programs we don't have anything really built in specifically for behavioral health. It's something we're working on actively now. You know, it's not uh, a mystery that you talk to a COPD patient and they have challenges with anxiety, or a, cor a coronary disease patient, they have challenges with depression. But that's not built into our SNP programs, and that's certainly important not just from the specific disease management, but from the complications and decisions and processes that lead to those readmissions. Uh, and the fourth thing, you know, I have to talk about because I represent a plan is cost-effective substitutes for more personalized care. We talk about doctors, you know, Caremore started in, in 91 and they were one of the first programs to use nurse practitioners as substitutes for physicians. Who's to say we don't have other substitutes, right? You, you know, Iora's done a great example of using those, those health coaches to really get involved, but a lot of these super utilizers need more than a clinician. They need a helping hand, they need conversation, they need to vent, they need to be talked down off a ledge. But there's, uh, we're moving in that direction in terms of these cost-effective substitutes, but we're still not there. 